What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another draw preview, and we have the big one, the Men's French Open. The draw is official. It's out right now. We have a lot of players that have actually pulled out of this event, so let's go look at the withdrawal list. So here is the updated withdrawal list. We have Balash. He's pulled out. Chorich is pulled out. Edmund. Kyrgios. Pospisil. Shapovalov, who is the highest-ranked male player to not be playing the French Open. He's out with a shoulder injury, and former champion Stan Vavrinka is also not playing the French Open. All right, let's start with the top of the draw. We've got Novak Djokovic. He is the number one seed. He takes on Tennis Sangren in the first round. So a good first round there for Djokovic. Winner of that match will take on either Puy or Quavos in the second round. Then we've got Caruso versus Duckworth. Winner of that match will take on either Barenkis or the number 29 seed Umber in the second round. Then we have the 21st seed Dimonor taking on Travaglia. Winner of that match will play either Uchiyama or former French Open semi-finalist Marco Cecchinato. Then we have Songa versus Nishioka. Winner of that's going to take on one of the best first round matches you'll see, Musetti taking on the number 13 seed Goffin. So circle that one as one to watch. But I've got to be honest, Djokovic has got a nice draw. He's got a good first week. Up until the fourth round, things are looking pretty good for him. So we're definitely going to be watching out for Djokovic early this week. Also keep an eye on Musetti. If he can get through Goffin, he might be able to make a run to the fourth round. And I'm also interested to see how Cecchinato does because a few years ago, Cecchinato made the semifinals of the French Open, actually beat Djokovic along the way to get to that semifinal. So interested to see how Cecchinato does in a tournament that he's played well at before. Going to the second section of the draw now, and it is stacked. We have the number nine seed, Berrettini, up the top of the draw. He gets a qualifier in the first round. Winner of that match will take on either Correa or Lopez in the second round. Then we have Anderson, Kevin Anderson. He's back. He's taking on Quan in the first round. Winner of that's going to take on either Seppi or the number 20 seed, Ojali Asim. Then we got the number 30 seed, Fritz. He takes on Souza. Winner of that match will take on either the wild card, Borgu or Kopfa in the second round. Then we got Chile versus Rindeneck. Winner of that match will take on either a qualifier or the number eight seed, Roger Federer. He's back at the French Open for the first time in two years, but he has not got an easy draw. Potentially, he has to play Chilich in the second round, Fritz in the third round, and then Berrettini in the fourth round. Not to mention, remember, this section of the draw takes on the top section. Players to watch out for, Berrettini had a great clay court season. Definitely one to watch this week. And with a good draw, he should get out of this, maybe make the quarterfinals. Obviously, we're going to be watching Roger Federer as well, see how he does at this event. But I'm also interested to see how Oje Ali Asim does, because remember, he's recently teamed up with Rafa Nadal's uncle, Uncle Tony, and also Rafa Nadal's former coach. So I'm interested to see how Oje Ali Asim does at a tournament that his coach has had great success. So maybe that success can filter down to Oje Ali Asim. And like I said, remember, the potential quarterfinals now, we could be getting a Federer versus Djokovic quarterfinal, or more likely, a Berrettini versus Djokovic quarterfinal because Berrettini has been in great form. He's won a title on clay this year as well. So I'm thinking we're going to get Berrettini versus Djokovic, but I know that we all want to see Federer versus Djokovic. Going to the next section of the draw there, and you can see straight away, Rafa Nadal, the number three seed. He is in the same half as Federer and Djokovic. It's the first time ever that the big three, the GOATs, have all been in the same half of a draw. He takes on Poprin in the first round. Winner of that match is going to take on a Frenchman in the second round because we've got the wild card Gaston taking on Gasquet in the first round. Then we have Norrie versus a qualifier. Winner of that match is going to take on either Harris or the number 26 seed Sonigo, who's been in some good form lately. Then we've got the 18th seed Sinner. He takes on Hubert in the first round. Winner of that match is going to take on either Major or Milman in the second round. Then we have your Mur versus Bayana. Winner of that match is going to take on either Ramos Vinoles or the number 14 seed Monfils. So you can see there, straight away, Nadal versus Sinner. That could be a fourth round matchup and it will be a good test if Sinner does get to that fourth round because he did play Rafa last year at the French Open. So it'll be good to see how far he's come in the last 10 months or so. Also, Sonigo could be playing Rafa in the third round. Players to watch out for, obviously Nadal. Got to watch out for him. Sonigo, Sinner, definitely keeping an eye on those two as well. But also keep an eye on Nori. He has been in some good form the last couple of weeks on the clay courts. Could he potentially beat Sonigo and take on Rafa in the third round? That could happen. All right, rounding out the top half of the draw, the stacked top half of the draw. We have the number 10 seed, Schwartzman. Semi-finals of the French Open last year, by the way. He takes on Lou in the first round. 
Winner of that match takes on either Manorino or Betane in the second round. Then we have Cole Schreiber versus Vadasco, Battle of the Veterans. Circle that one as one to watch. Winner of that match is going to take on either a qualifier or the number 24 seed, Karatsev. Then we've got the 28 seed, Basilashvili, taking on Lajovic. That's a fun match as well. Circle that one as one to watch. Winner of that match is going to take on a qualifier in the second round because we've got two qualifiers going at it in the first round. Then we have Bagnus versus the wild card Bonsai. Winner of that match is going to take on either Struff or the number seven seed Rublev in the second round. So Rublev has not got an easy start. Struff, that's a tough first round matchup. But for me, this is a very wide open part of the draw. We've got Rublev, who's probably the most informed player out of this part of the draw. Very closely followed by Karatsev. But Schwartzman's also been great on clay over the last couple of years. So if he can find some form, he might be able to do something. So I'm definitely watching out for Rublev, Karatsev, and Schwartzman. And remember, the winner of this part of the draw is most likely going to play Rafa Nadal in the quarterfinals. So we could be getting a Rafa Rafa Nadal versus Andre Rublev quarterfinal. Remember, those two played at Monte Carlo with Rublev getting the win. Or could we see a Karatsev versus Nadal quarterfinal? That is definitely on the cards. And remember that this section of the draw also has to compete with the likes of Berrettini, Federer potentially, Djokovic as potential semifinal opponents. So the top half of the draw is not where you want to be, especially if you're someone like Rublev, who's just trying to make his way up the top 10. He's going to have to battle all the goats if he's going to make the final. All right, let's head down to the bottom half. Half of the draw now, we've got Alexander Zverev, the number six seed. He's got a qualifier in the first round. Winner of that match is going to take on another qualifier because we've got two qualies going at it. So Zverev has the best first rounds any player could ask for. Then we have Mute versus Jera. Winner of that match is going to take on either Kichmenovic or the number 25 seed, Evans, in the second round. Then we've got the 23rd seed, Hashinov, taking on Vesely. Winner of that match is going to take on either Nishikori or a qualifier in the second round. Then we have Hampton versus another qualifier. Winner of that match is going to take on either another qualifier or the number 11 seed, Batista Agu. So I think Zverev has probably the easiest first couple of rounds, but we all know Alexander Zverev doesn't necessarily make things easy for himself, even though on paper he should be getting out of this part of the draw pretty easily. So definitely watching out for Zverev this week. Also keeping an eye on Nishikori as an unseeded player. Watch out for him. And also Dan Evans. Remember, Evans started his clay court season beating Djokovic at Monte Carlo. So very interested to see how Dan Evans can convert that into the majors and he might potentially play Zverev in the third round. Going to the next section of the draw, and this section is very, very stacked with great clay court players. The number 15 seed, Kasper Rudd. He takes on Benoit Paire in the first round. Winner of that match is going to take on either Machizak or the wildcard Kazo in the second round. Then we have Fakina versus Kukushkin. Winner of that match is going to take on either a qualifier or the number 19 seed, Herkatch in the second round. Then we've got the 27 seed Fanini taking on the wildcard Barrera. Winner of that match is going to take on either Fucevic or Simon in the second round. Then we've got Elbert versus Delbonis. Winner of that match is going to take on either Anduha or the number four seed team. And that is definitely one match to watch because Anduha beat Federer a couple of weeks ago. And Dominic team is not in great form. So circle that one as a potential upset in the first round. Players to watch out for, obviously. We're watching out for Domi, Dominic team, Kasper Rudd as well. He has had a great clay court season. Career high ranking, a lot of wins on the clay as well, including a title in Geneva. So Kasper Rudd, he'll be loving this draw. But I'm also interested to see how Fucevic does because Fucevic is a very dangerous unseated player in any draw and very underrated as well. He actually beat Medvedev in the first round of the French Open last year. So I rate his chances of maybe making even the fourth round if he can get through the likes of Fanini and team. And don't forget that this section of the draw will take on the section we just saw. So potentially, we're going to have a team versus Zverev quarterfinal if we go by the rankings. Or based on form, we're going to get a Zverev versus Rud quarterfinal. Either way, it's wide, wide open because like I said, Zverev isn't a guarantee to make the quarterfinals. And who knows who's going to get out of this part of the draw. Going to the next section of the draw here, the number five seed. It's the final City Pass. He has Jeremy Shardy in the first round. Winner of that match is going to take on either Korda or Martinez in the second round. Then we have a qualifier versus Krajanovic. Winner of that's going to take on an American in the second round because we've got Query versus the number 31 seed, Isna, going out in the first round. Then we've got Rayonic, the 17th seed, taking on Montero. Winner of that match is going to take on either Johnson or TFO in the second round. Then we've got Jurisimov taking on a French wildcard, Calcade. Winner of that match is going to take on either Gombas or the 12th seed, Corino Busta. So if you're a Stefano Pass fan, you're going to be loving this. This is probably the best draw you could have asked for. He's not going to have to play any of the GOATs until the final. And he's also in Medvedev's quarter of the draw. So Stefano Pass is definitely the highlight player here. He's the one to watch. But some players also to keep 
keep an eye on. Corda, he really broke out in the last edition of the French Open, eventually losing to Rafa, but he showed some promise and has had a really good 2021. And Carino Busta, interested to see how he does because he played well last year at the French Open, eventually losing to Djokovic, but always one to watch out for as well, Carino Busta. And finally, going to the last part of the draw here, we've got the number 16 seed, Dimitrov. He takes on Giron in the first round. Winner of that match is going to take on either Pella or a qualifier in the second round. Then we have Rusevere versus another qualifier. The winner of that match is going to take on either Londero or the number 22 seed Garen in the second round. Then we got the 32nd seed Opelka. He takes on Martin in the first round. Winner of that match will take on either Munair or Thompson in the second round. Then we have Paul versus O'Connell. Winner of that match is going to take on either Bublek or the second seed Medvedev. And that is an absolute nightmare first round for Medvedev because Bublek, he loves to cause an upset and he's not that bad on the clay as well. And we all know Medvedev, for some reason, just can't find his footing on the clay courts. He hates playing on clay, as he says. So a tough first round for him. But the players to watch out for in probably the most wide open part of the draw. Bublek, keep an eye on him. I think he can cause an upset in the first round. I reckon he can beat Medvedev. Also interested to see how Opelka does, having played really well a couple of weeks ago in Rome, proving that he can play on the clay. And also Garen. I think this is set up perfectly for Garen to get out of this section and make the quarterfinal. Finals. Garen should be the favorite to get out of this. Maybe Dimitrov, he's up the top there, but I think Garen, he's a clay quarter, and I rate his chances of making his first Grand Slam quarterfinal. And remember, this section of the draw takes on City Pass's section of the draw. So potentially, going by the rankings, Medvedev City Pass, but I don't think that's likely. More likely, it's going to be Garen versus City Pass in the quarterfinals, with the winner of that match taking on either Zverev, Kasper Rudd, or potentially Dominic Team in the semifinals. So the next gen are going to make a final if they can put it together because there's no goats in this section of the draw. So there it is, the French Open draw. The first time that the big three are going to be playing in the same half of a draw ever. It's the first time ever that the big three are going to be playing in the same half. Are they going to meet in the finals though? Are we going to get a quarterfinal between Djokovic and Federer? Is the semifinal going to be Nadal Djokovic? Who's going to make the final on the bottom half of the draw? Is it going to be City Pass, Team, Zverev? It's just wide open. So many questions, which makes it so exciting. Let me know down in the comments below who's winning the French Open. Is it Nadal? Or will we have a different champion? Maybe a new champion this year. Are we going to have City Pass as champion? Maybe Zverev. Or is Dominic Team finally going to lift the trophy? Let me know down in the comments below. So at the end of last year, when we did our predictions, I picked Rafa Nadal to win the French Open. So I'm going to stick with that prediction. I think Rafa Nadal is going to win the French Open again, winning his 21st Grand Slam title. But I am very interested to see how Djokovic, Federer, and also City Pass go, because I think Stefano City Pass has a great chance to making his first Grand Slam final. And if he does play Rafa in that final, remember Rafa's going to have to get through Djokovic in the semifinals. And that is not going to be an easy match. So Stefano City Pass might be a chance, but I'm going to pick Rafa to win this one. Again, let me know down in the comments below who is winning this French Open. So the first time in history, we've got the best three players of all time in the same half of the draw at a Grand Slam.